biggest races will decide who will take on the Democratic incumbents. Plus, the Avs are back with the Stanley Cup. We'll help you prepare for Thursday's victory parade, 21 years in the making. All right, well, let's start off this hour of news with a live look over the Mile High City. Two days in counting. Jessica, just two days until the Stanley Cup makes it through downtown Denver and over there to Civic Center Park. I am so excited. Okay, yes, you came from Tampa, now you're back here. I'm you're back and I'm ready to go. <laughs> well, a bit of a smoky start to the day also across some of the metro after a trash fire in Inglewood, but the forecast seems to be looking great for that parade Jason's talking about. It will be, yeah. I'll talk more about that coming up in a bit. Upper 60s to low 70s here this morning. Winds are southwest at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Uh, you're going to see a nice warm up near 90 by about noon. Low to mid 90s for highs this afternoon, so it is going to be more summer like. Like things heating up Erie 92 Highlands Ranch 91 70s and 80s in the foothills and mountains this afternoon. So we're going to be under some pretty dry conditions. And when you look at our 10 day forecast for temps, uh, warmer than average conditions covering a good portion of northeastern Colorado. So uh, we're settling into more summer like conditions after what was a really cool and cloudy weekend coming up. I'll show you when we have a better chance for some thunderstorms and some showers here in town. And right now we have some heavy duty stop and go traffic from around Yale, Evans, Colorado Boulevard, trying to get on up to an earlier crash right at Alameda. All lanes are open going up to 6th Avenue, but take a look at the camera back here at University where you can see uh, that northbound side is just barely moving, just creeping along so slow the motorcyclist almost has to stop and put the foot down. That southbound side you can see is also running really heavy, so we did have some problems there, and you can still see a lot of heavy stop and go traffic from the drive times, about 25 uh, minutes on the uh, southbound side, but the northbound side is over a half an hour trying to get through there. If you ever hear of a crash right after Bellevue on I-25, that is gone. All lanes are open there. Also had a report of a crash here on I-70 on that westbound side right near Colorado Boulevard. I am not seeing anything blocking lanes, but you are looking at about a 20 minute drive getting through that lowered section. It's election day in Colorado, and right now polling places are open across the state. Denver 7's Veronica Acosta is inside a precinct in downtown Denver with a preview. Veronica? Polling sites have been open for about an hour now. We've seen a couple people walk into the Wellington Web Building to this site here behind me to cast their vote. And if at any point today you're thinking that you need to do the same, here's what you need to know. First off, there is a 12 hour chunk in the day where you can do this. So those polling sites, they opened at 7 a.m. this morning. And as long as you're in line by 7 this evening, you will be good to go. If you're not registered to vote in Colorado, you can register today and then go ahead and cast your vote today as well. There are some major races on the ballot to know about, and we're talking about everything from U.S. Senate to Congress to some of those state seats as well. One of the big questions is who's going to take on Governor Jared Polis come November. Republicans Heidi Ganahl and Greg Lopez, they're both vying for that spot. And Denver 7 spoke with both of them earlier this month. Listen to what they said would be their priority should they get to take on the, the governor and then potentially even that job. What I hear around the state is folks are really upset and frustrated about government overreach, whether it's taxes, fees, regulations, um, you know, moving industries out of Colorado, like the energy industry. Uh, we need to make sure that we trust the people of Colorado to make good decisions for themselves and their businesses, their families, their kids, first and foremost. And that's what I call the Colorado way of life. Uh, I think that's my first priority. Crime is really a big issue here in the state of Colorado because it impacts families. It impacts our quality of life. And so we need to make sure that we give back qualified immunity to the police officers, that we figure out a way where we can be tough on crime once again, because I think that's really what's tearing apart our community fabric. Many of you are probably going to be looking up your closest polling site this morning, so the best advice for you is to go ahead and look up your county election supervisor, look up that website, and then you'll be able to find that on there. If you're in Denver, all you have to do is go to denvergov.org, and you'll see a list of sites on that website, too. In Denver, I'm Veronica Acosta, Denver 7. Veronica, thank you. We'll have coverage throughout the day on air and streaming on Denver 7 Plus. Some breaking news from overnight. An Arvada officer shot a person. This happened near Wadsworth and West 61st Avenue. No officers were hurt, but the suspect is in the hospital. It's not clear what led to that shooting. 
Denver and Aurora police are investigating several shootings since yesterday afternoon. We mapped out where Denver officers responded to four different ones across the city. Investigators say one person was shot at each scene. Aurora police are investigating a triple shooting at a city park. Two men and one woman were shot. All of those victims are expected to recover. No word of arrests. The public health impact of gun violence is the focus of a conference today featuring experts from CU. Denver 7's Christian Lopez is live with what they're going to discuss. Christian? Yeah, Jessica, we had the Uvalde and Buffalo shootings and several more after that. And just this past weekend, there were 10 mass shootings across the country that left more than 50 people killed or injured. And just like everyone else, faculty at CU Boulder is heartbroken and angered by all of this violence. So they are doing their part to help. They are hosting a webinar this afternoon at 5 p.m. And this will focus on bringing together faculty experts from several different fields of study at CU Boulder and CU and shoots medical campuses and these are experts in child psychology, emergency treatment, faculty from the Center for the Study of Violence and Prevention and the Institute of Health and Wellness. So they'll all be sharing their research and findings to help the community really understand the mental health impacts that can lead to gun violence as well as discuss ways to help prevent it. CU Boulder's Chancellor Phil DiStefano told me that several years ago after the Columbine shooting, the director for the University Center for Study and Prevention of Violence visited every high school in Colorado to talk about gun violence and prevention and help campuses adopt the best practices. And he, he says that his biggest goal with this webinar today is education. I believe we have a responsibility uh, to share research in areas of gun violence, safety, mental health and wellness with members of our community, uh, whether they're in Colorado uh, or across the country, across the world. Uh, secondly, this is not a debate, um, and this is a way of, of the university using those research findings, uh, what we're known for as a major research university, in getting information out to the public, uh, because gun violence, as you know, has really impacted all of us uh, especially the, the last couple of years. This webinar will take place at 5 o'clock this afternoon. They'll also have a question and answer segment. And if you'd like to participate, it is open to the public. And we posted a link on our website. Just go to the denverchannel.com and look for this story. Live in Denver this morning, I'm Christian Lopez, Denver 7. Christian, thank you. Over the weekend, President Biden signed a new gun law into effect. It includes enhanced background checks for gun buyers under 21, a ban on people convicted of domestic abuse from purchasing guns, incentives for states to pass red flag laws, and funds for school security and mental health services. Taking a live look from Washington today, all eyes will be on Capitol Hill as the House Select Committee holds a last minute public hearing on the January 6th attack. The committee was originally scheduled to take a break until mid July. Now today's hearing will present new evidence and witness testimony. Sources tell ABC News the witness will be Cassidy Hutchinson, a top advisor to former President Trump's chief of staff Mark Meadows, will carry the hearing as a special report at 11 o'clock over on Denver 7 and on our Denver 7 digital platforms. Honestly, I could just watch that video on repeat all morning. Gabe Landeskog lifts the Stanley Cup above his head as he and the rest of those Stanley Cup champion Avalanche return to Denver. Really a dream come true for so many players and so many fans. Thursday, the Avs will be giving the Cup a bit of a tour around town during their victory parade. That parade starts at 10 a.m., but fans are encouraged to arrive a whole lot earlier. It starts at Union Station and ends at Civic Center Park with a big celebration and speeches up from the stage. The team and the Stanley Cup will wind down 17th Street and Broadway in order to get there. The city is expecting hundreds of thousands of people to pack into downtown on Thursday. That means there's going to be a whole lot of foot traffic for some businesses along that route or nearby. We spoke with the owners of Tea with Tay over on the 16th Street Mall. It's helping bring people back downtown, especially having such a huge win in the sports community. It just helps like build the whole downtown community. The business is one of a handful of pop-ups the city hopes to make permanent to revitalize the 16th Street Mall. 
And Denver 7 is your home for the Stanley Cup Parade. We're partnering with Altitude Sports for the most comprehensive coverage of the parade. Our pre-parade coverage starts at 4.30 a.m. That's over on Denver 7. Then our parade show will begin at 9.30. Remembering a trailblazer, how the Broncos are marking the passing of Marlon Briscoe, the first quarterback in the NFL. And there's a holiday weekend coming up. How much more your July 4th cookout is going to cost you this year? 